It is now raining for the last six or seven, maybe eight hours. And we are making, well, we've got only 17, 18 amps outside. Still making 1.8 kilowatt from the system. So, and this was always the goal to get at least one kilowatt from the solar panels in these conditions, in shading conditions or in bad, really bad weather as we have right now. This was the minimum energy I wanted to harvest from the solar here to make it all work, to run the pool pump, charge the vehicle, run the house eventually and also charge the battery. Well, now you would say one kilowatt is not enough to run all this, right? And you are absolutely correct with that. But we also have the battery here sitting there. It is charged to um, almost oh yeah, 60% now we have reached just now. And in these weather conditions, I'm always shaving off a little bit of my stored solar energy in my battery. I'll show you this in a second. And at least one kilowatt of incoming solar power is enough to keep the battery on a certain level. We are using a tiny bit more energy every day than we put in again from the solar. But because of the storage capacity of 44 kilowatt hours with this battery, I can do this for weeks. And we usually have these weather conditions only for a day, maybe two but now it was uh, like three days since we have these clouds and rain and shower and no sun at all. So it has been now four months exactly, four months since we upgraded our solar here on the off-grid garage from 5.5 .5 kilowatt peak with the used solar panels we had installed to a brand new Samsung, no, brand new Hyundai shingled solar panels and also the Phono half-cut panels on the carport. And in today's video, I want to show you how the system performed since then and what my thoughts are and if we can connect more load. So as you know, I'm sharing all the data here from the off-grid garage online. It's in the Victron VRM for everyone accessible. Link is always under all of my videos and on my website as well. So you can always have a sneak peek into the system here and can see how much power is actually coming from the solar at the moment. How much energy do we charge into the battery and how much is being used by AC load and also DC load. And here on the right you can also see the temperatures outdoor, inside the garage and inside the battery shelf as well. And down here it shows you the weather in this area. It's not 100% accurate but it gives you, a, gives you an idea what's going on. And further down here you have the statistics on a daily base. So today we have made 21 kilowatt hours which is fantastic in these conditions. And we have also used 12 kilowatt hours combined AC and DC load. And here the blue line gives you the state of charge curve. This is how full our battery is. And you can see we started the day with a 41% state of charge. And then the battery got further discharged to a 37% until the sun came out. And shortly before noon, the sun came actually out for a couple of minutes and we had like 10.5 kilowatt coming from the roof all of a sudden and 100, 180 amps went into the battery. Yeah, this was like here between 12 and 1 o'clock. We made over 5 kilowatt hours in this one hour. And then the big clouds came back, 1.6 kilowatt hours. We had a bit of a thunderstorm coming through and really big and dark and gray clouds. And the system showed me only 5 watts altogether from the solar system, 5 watts only for a couple of minutes and then it went back up and now at 3.30 we are still making 720 watts it just started raining again it gets really dark outside again and now the power is not enough anymore to charge our battery so we are taking away a little bit of power already and this will probably continue until the next morning then and now we want to have a look at last year before we installed the solar upgrade here on the off-grid garage so this is the time frame from the 1st of January to the 7th of November 2022. This was basically the last day before we got the solar upgrade connected. Well, and we can we can see the single months here. January wasn't too bad actually because this is our summertime here. And this was still this was still the solar upgrade with around 4.2 kilowatt peak. We made 325 kilowatt hours in January. And then you can see the solar production is already going down February, March, April because because the sun is already on a lower angle. And then June is our worst month. I made only 100, 130 kilowatt hours from the system. But this was also the time when we upgraded the west roof with two more strings. And this was then 3.6 kilowatt hour peak altogether from the west roof. The east roof was not upgraded yet. I had all my rails mounted and everything and the solar panels were already here. 
but I couldn't find time to do the installation actually. And as you know, it never got done. So July is a tiny bit better than June already, but then August is usually a lot better. Far more sunshine and the sun starts to climb and the angle gets better and better. And then September we could see 428 kilowatt hours all of a sudden and October even better with 500 kilowatt hours per month. This was all with the old system still. So all in total I could harvest 2.7 megawatt hours of solar energy and I've used 2.8 megawatt hours of solar energy in this time frame. And this is a bit of a weird construct now because it uses the generator as additional power I have put into the system, which is usually correct. If you start a generator, you're adding external power into your system. So you can actually consume more than you have, than you have produced with your solar system. So the solar production plus the generator usually gives you your overall consumption. Well, and this is a bit of a wrong calculation here in the off-grid garage because the generator is not a generator, it is a second inverter which feeds power into the first inverter. So they are daisy chained together. Even the energy for the generator is not coming from fossil fuel, it is coming from the same battery and the same solar. So this calculation actually does not work correctly because it is not additional energy we are producing. It is coming from the same source, the same solar and the same battery. So from our overall consumption, we have to take away the 129 kilowatt hours for the generator. And then we have the real consumption of our system. And I will show you this installation again in a future video because both of these inverters were made from Victron and they are connected to our Raspberry Pi running the Venus OS. But the generator inverter is not being recognized as an inverter. And this is a bit of a weird thing because they should just know in the Victron system. But again, more about this later. 2.7 megawatt hours in 2022 until the solar upgrade. So this is now the production we had since the solar upgrade was installed on the roof here from November the 8th when the west roof went online to the end of the year 31st of December. And alone in this not even two months time I made almost as much energy as I did here we've got them side by side now. This is with the old solar system and this is with the new solar system. A bit over 10 months a bit less than two months. And of course we had a massive increase of solar production, but also a massive increase of consumption because I used all this energy, I used it. Since the installation went online and was connected, the battery was full every single day and I connected all the loads I could. I had the pool pump running 24 seven. I charged the vehicle every day. And we also ran extension cables from the inverter here from the garage back to the house, connected the dishwasher, the washing machine, later on in December then the hot water system as well. And also our good old SPED fridge was running from the solar system here in the off-grid garage. And this is the whole last year, consumption and solar production. Don't get confused with the AC input here. This is when I was playing around with the software and I changed the settings from generator to AC input to see if this makes actually a difference and how the Victron system calculates the energy coming from the other Victron inverter, but it didn't make any difference. But it shows now in the statistic as coming from AC, but this system is totally off grid. It has never been connected to the grid and won't be. So here we can see the production with the old solar system from January until October. And then beginning of November, we had the new system already up and running. And you can see the massive difference it makes. October, 500 kilowatt hours. November, double that, over 1000 kilowatt hours. And December, 1.6 megawatt hours, 1650 kilowatt hours. So that's a quick look to December 2021. So again, one year back, 460 kilowatt hours. This was still with the old system in December. And then with the new system, one year later in December, 1.6. So three times as much power generated with the new system. And it is not three times bigger. But of course, the new solar panels are far more efficient than the used ones we had on the roof before. That alone makes a huge difference. So when I produced 
over 5.1 megawatt hours of energy last year here on the off-grid garage. <laughs> this, is this is incredible. That is insane. That is so much power. This is all off-grid. I used all this power myself. I used it all. But I also wasted a lot of energy, you know. I left the computer running here in the garage and the pool pump was running 24-7 on a higher speed. All this wouldn't be necessary actually. But because I had so much surplus energy, I, um, I didn't want the battery to be fully charged every time and then the solar shut off. So I turned on different loads as much as I could to, to use all this energy up. And I also bought a Bitcoin miner, as you have suggested, and hooked this all up to the system and let this one run whenever the battery was full. But I haven't turned this one on for the last four weeks or so because the weather was just too shitty and I didn't have enough energy to run this all the time. And this is an additional 1.6 kilowatt of load. But uh, whenever the battery is full and I'm not at home, so I cannot connect anything useful to it, I turn on the miner and let it run. It makes me between three and five dollars a day. So that's actually far better than if I would export this energy into the grid. And here's another view of the last six months of the solar production. You can see this, the old system still until October. November was already the new system. Then December, January was the top so far almost 1.9 megawatt hours of production <laughs> i mean that is crazy and february is already going down because the sun is on a lower angle now but february was still 1.4 megawatt hours okay and this is a bit of a breakdown of this month from the first until the 12th when i make this video here and i have not fully charged my battery one single day but i usually turn on my load when i reach 90 percent set of charge so i i rarely let the battery fully charge yeah, and even now in March, I already made 370 kilowatt hours of energy in one third of the month. So we will get over 1000 kilowatt hours again until end of this month here. Incredible. And here you can also see the last couple of days, probably the last five days or so, how steady the state of charge is. And here on the 8th, for example, you can see I have used the battery from 67% state of charge was the maximum in the afternoon down to 35 in the morning and here the next day again 65 to 49 and then 72 to 45 and here 58 to 42 so i'm keeping the battery in the middle state of charge now and even under these conditions with all the rain and the big thick clouds coming in here it is enough to give me enough energy to keep the battery almost on a constant level but you can see the last three days how the actual state of charge goes down, right? So battery average was here 56, then 51, and now it is 46 for today. So we are going down slowly, but if I only take five or six or 7% of my battery state of charge every single day, and the rest is being covered by the solar system directly, I could take this for probably two weeks at least, and we would still have energy in the battery. So as long as the red bar in this graph is higher than the yellow one, we are using more energy than we recharge into the battery. And this was pretty much the case for the last five days with this European shit weather here. So, and I want to show you something interesting here. I've pulled out all my um, energy bills from the last, um, since we are with this provider, which supplies 100% renewable energy, by the way, but I'm not using much of that anymore. Um, since 2016, and I had a look, we have used around 2.2 megawatt hours of energy in this quarter, just in this quarter. The year after, it was 2.4 megawatt hours we have used. 2018, 2.4 again. So, and then the next year we had um, these smart meters installed. So they hook up to a LTE connection and they basically can read the meters on a daily base. And we have a far better breakdown of our energy costs now. Well, anyway, this is the last quarter 2020. This was before I started with the off-grid garage. So there was no thoughts about battery, solar, YouTube channel, nothing like this. This was far before everything else. And in this last quarter, we have used uh, 2000 kilowatt hours of energy. And you can see this was fairly constant across the years before as well, between two and 2.4 megawatt hours per quarter. And then, in 2021, in March, I just looked this up in the VIM. This was the first time we connected 
the um, system to the VRM. So the Raspberry Pi went online in March 2021 and, we, and then we did some testing here, 30 kilowatt hours the last month, 90 kilowatt hours, 90, 105. We had the inverter up and running then. So we could actually use and see how much energy we were using. And of course we did a lot of testing with the battery 1.0 and the QUCC BMS and only the Phoenix inverter in the little, in the metal electrical enclosure we had right down there and this was the start of the off-grid garage basically so the red bars are our grid consumption and the green bars are our grid export from the solar system on top of the house this is the high feed tariff where i get the um 44 cents plus another 12 or so from the provider this is the thing we cannot touch right we cannot touch so anyway, you can see we are ex we are actually um, importing more energy than we have exported. But then the next year, with the off-grid garage already online, so we disconnected the garage. We had no pool pump running anymore. I charged the vehicle sometimes from the from the system here, and certainly all the electrical tools I'm using here, like the garden shredder and the electrical chainsaw, uh, the compressor I have here, all this kind of stuff, and everything I'm doing here on the workbench was already not taken from the grid anymore so the next year it looked like this you can see everything is shifting towards the green bar so it's like pushing these red bars further down so we are exporting more energy but we are importing less energy consumption went down to 640 yep again the last quarter of the year before 2000 kilowatt hours and then 641 kilowatt hours only. So there was already a massive shift and we were just getting started here with the battery 1.0. There was no battery shelf, nothing, and a couple of solar panels. But I was already running cables from the garage uh, to the house and connecting the dishwasher to the Phoenix inverter, all this kind of stuff. So this already saved us a lot of, a lot of power per quarter, right? Per quarter. But then, Last year, so three months ago, we got the new invoice from the energy provider and we went from 641 kilowatt hours down to 178. Look at this. Look at this graph. It looks like we are basically only exporting, right? This is two years ago and this is now. Look at this shift. And there's, there's barely energy left we are actually using here. Most of the energy is now coming from the off-grid garage here already with extension cables and we have connected more and more loads now. This was seven days before we got the solar upgrade. And you can see the first eight days here, there's a bit of import from the grid still, but then the battery got fully charged and I figured out how much power I actually have. And from there on, from this peak on here, it went down and it never got as high as here on the on the 10th or 15th or something it was and then here before christmas last year we also connected the hot water system to the off-grid garage and we are also running the water pump and the fridge outside from the off-grid garage now this is all being done by extension cables temporary setup to see if it actually works and how much energy i can actually produce and use and you can see we are barely barely using what does it say? 1.94 kilowatt hours per day from the grid. This is what we are still using during the night, which is not connected to the off-grid garage, like the washing machine and the, the freezer and the oven, for example, and all the other appliances we have inside the house. They are not running from the off-grid garage, so we are still using 1.9 kilowatt hours for that in average. Well, here two years ago, we were reliant on the grid with 22.5 kilowatt hours per day. That was the average daily consumption. So less than 10% of what we have used two years ago. The vehicle, the pool and the hot water system have now disappeared from this invoice altogether. This is all running from the off-grid garage. So you can see we are fairly close to actually being 100% off-grid here, alone from the off-grid garage already. So as you can see, the upgrade here on the off-grid garage was well worth the money. Not only we get super good efficiency with the new solar panels here, but we are also almost off-grid from a technical, from an energy perspective. But then on the other hand, I have already um, some new ideas here for some upgrades. I've got a new solar charge controller, some ducting, and we have some space left here actually, which I would like to fill. So there will be another project coming up very soon because rule number one is 
you can never have enough solar. Okay guys, I think so far this video from today, I'm showing you the results of the solar upgrade here on the off-grid garage, the battery installations and my energy consumption as such. So fairly impressive what you can achieve with a couple of extension cables already. <laughs> but of course, this is very cumbersome. And um, But I must say, I have um, actually trained my wife very well. So she's always carrying these extension cables now. And when she's going to uh, to connect the dishwasher or the um, the washing machine or something, then she uses the extension cables. I'm using the power from the off-grid garage for these um, appliances. But I really want to wait for winter time now and see how much energy I'm producing here on the garage. Then, because then we have all the shading of the big trees. And I have to try it first. I have to try and see how much power, how much energy we are generating during winter time in comparison to the years before when it wasn't great. But that was with the used solar panels, uh, less efficiency and overall less power generation. Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support, for all your generous donations. Welcome everyone new to this bad team. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Oh, look at this, we're still charging the battery. 12 amps outside. <laughs>